This episode of What The Tech is brought to you by Braintree. If you're searching for the right payment API, Braintree makes it easy to support multiple mobile payment types with one simple integration. To learn more and to try out their sandbox, go to braintreepayments.com slash podcast. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Tech, I'm Andrew Zarin. Of course, I'm joined by Paul Therod, as I am each and every week. How are you doing, Paul? Pretty good. Pretty oh, good. Yeah. Not great. <laughs> Not bad. Just pretty good. Um, uh, this is the first Skype video call I've made since I reinstalled my Windows on my computer. I oh, think. You, you formatted? Yeah. Why? The latest build of Windows 10 is so horribly buggy. I just had lots of problems. And so what did you go down if to? I, I went, well, I went back to the same thing. But I, I, I thought that the problems were related to the upgrade over upgrade thing. And I figured, you know, clean install, this thing will be nice. You can't actually do a clean install of Windows 10, uh, the latest build, which I knew. Um, but I, I did think you could, you know, install the initial build and then go directly to the newest one. But you can't. You actually update to the interim build then to the third build you know? yeah. so it wasn't particularly um it wasn't a clean install but it was a cleaner install yeah but but it still has uh, rampant uh, issues in fact the same issues i was having are present again so it is a cleaner system but i explored there's something wonky where eventually i just have to try to tr shut off everything I can and reboot it, and then it's fine again. So initially, did you experience these problems with the new build, or these are some things that manifested as you continued using These were it? problems with the new build, yeah. 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 The new build has has been a, kind of a bad experience overall. I mean, they they added a bunch of um, new features, which are cool. Um, but, but things that worked broke. Yeah. You know, there was the OneDrive controversy. I don't remember if we talked about this last week. Um where they're getting rid of the really sophisticated sync client yeah. that they introduced in Windows 8.1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a real shame. Um, but they, aren't they reintroducing it or they're eliminating no. this? Oh, no, they're getting oh rid of it. I, thought, I thought it was going to be reintroduced in later builds. Yeah, a lot of people uh, misread, <laughs> you know. Um, so why, why are they removing on? it? What's that? Why, why, why did they decide to remove it? I thought it was just removed for this specific build until, you know, they yeah. fix whatever was going on. You know, it's funny. I, I'm I'm not 100 percent sure I could tell you exactly why. Um, I know I, I'll tell you this. I mean, I can tell you some of the reasons. I'm not really 100 percent sure these are the reasons. You know, um, if you I, you're probably not familiar with the way that this worked before because you're I don't think you're using Windows 8 one on any particular computer. Uh, or whatever. I, I have one computer with 8 one. Okay, well, yeah. if you're familiar with how OneDrive works on Windows 7 and and on the Mac. When you initially set it up, you can go through a, a settings interface where you choose which folders are going to sync. Yeah, and you you can kind of go and pick and choose, and it's little you know folders and subfolders, and uh, it's kind of a, you know if you have a complicated or big structure of folders like I do, uh, that can be a little convoluted. But you know whatever, it gives you the opportunity to have a bunch of stuff in the cloud and pick what's going to sync down to the device. The only problem with it is when you have that kind of a sync client you can't see the stuff you're not syncing at all. There's no indication. So if you had three folders in one drive and a bunch of content in each of them, and you only synced one on that computer when you go into the OneDrive folder, you only see one folder. You have no way of even knowing that those other folders exist. Right there. Okay. Yeah. So on Windows 8.1, <laughs> Microsoft created a more sophisticated sync client. And the sync client in Windows 8.1 has placeholder files. So... Uh, instead of you know manually logging in with your Microsoft app, you log into your account with your Microsoft account, and OneDrive automatically syncs to whatever you have in OneDrive, and it it doesn't download anything to your computer, except for placeholder files. So it creates folders, it creates placeholder files to represent the files that are up in the cloud. That are up in the cloud. So, so what happens if I click on that, on the placeholder? Will, if you're connected online, it'll will, open it up a download browser. in place, and you'll open it. Okay. Um, most applications, not all applications, uh, work fine with that kind of system. You can arbitrarily right-click on any folder or any file or any collection of those things mm -hmm. and say, make this available offline. 
Okay. Right. If you get on a plane, you're good to go. You work on things just like they're on your file system. If they are. I if so, let, I, I see the placeholder. I click on it. It downloads mm -hmm. the file. If I delete yep. that file, does it put the placeholder back there? Nope, it deletes it everywhere. The, the true everywhere. version is always in the cloud. Okay. If you work on files offline and get online, it will have to sync them, right? Okay. If it if it sees that there are file versioning problems uh, that it can't, it will present both of them to you and let you decide how you want to handle it and all that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, this is an awesome system for a power user. Yeah. The problem is uh, a lot of people get on a plane and haven't downloaded those files because they see them in the file system and they assume they're on their computer. And then they're at 30,000 feet and they double click on a Word document or whatever the heck it is and say, sorry, you know, you have to be connected to the Internet. So that's a bad experience. I think there are ways around that. Um, but the other major issue that I know about is that placeholder files are not free. You know, they're not zero yeah. bytes. Um, and, and in particular, in the case of photos, which, you know, when you think about unlimited storage on one but, drive. I mean, but I mean, about, like, they're, they're virtually zero well, bytes, well, right? But they're not. So um, for them to work correctly in Windows, think about the things that have to happen. They have to have thumbnails associated with them in various sizes, for, especially for photos. Yeah. Because you want to be able to browse through that folder and say, yeah, that's the one I want. They can't have garbage icons. They have to have real thumbnails. That takes up space. Um. I, I don't have the, an exact figure. Uh, in fact, I should ask Microsoft if they have one. I know I know it's variable depending on what kind of content it is. But if you if you actually filled up a terabyte of space up in OneDrive with photos mostly and some documents and maybe some music files, a couple of videos, whatever it was. Let, let's just pretend you filled up a, a terabyte of space. Okay. And then you bought one of those $99 HP Stream 7 tablets that has 16 gigs 16 of storage. Gigs probably 8 gigs free, something like that. Or you bought a 32 gig device that had maybe 18 gig free or wh however that works out. And you log in with your Microsoft account and you start using it and everything's fine. And then you wake up the next morning and, and you, there's a big red thing in the middle of the screen that says, hey, you're out of disk space. Because the syncing of those placeholder files has now finished. And that does take up more space than you have on your disk. It's not, it's not, again, it's not a terabyte, but it's, Whatever amount of, you know, it depends. I mean, so it, I, it could become a significant number. I, I I just thought those placeholder files were, let's say, yeah, 30K not, not, or 20K. Yeah. It, was a, it was a very small... Well, uh, but again, it, when you're representing a terabyte of files, depending on what kind of yeah, files they are, yeah, I guess you're it right. could be gigabytes of space. And so you've got these two opposing forces, right? Um, super inexpensive devices with no storage. And now we're giving you unlimited storage in the cloud, right? Yeah. And so how do you bridge that gap? You know, um, Microsoft makes mobile clients that are browse only um, uh, where you can see the stuff, but it's always off. I'm sorry. It's always online only, I guess. And you can manually download a file at a time or whatever, and that's fine. Windows needs something more sophisticated. But the basic story in Windows 10, Windows 10 is that... They're going back to the Windows 7 client for all intents and purposes. I don't think it's actually the Windows 7 client, but it looks and works just like it. Uh -huh. That means you have to go back to doing it the old-fashioned way where you pick and choose. You know, When I updated my existing system to this build, I got a big red bang on the OneDrive icon. It said, nope, you don't have enough space. You can't do this. That was actually a bug. Um, it should have still handled it because I wasn't syncing all of OneDrive to my computer anyway. But um, it's a problem. And So, so they don't. Because we spoke about this a couple of weeks ago, and I was I, I love this feature. I, I love the yeah. fact that I could have offline representation of what I have, yep. and I could see it there, and I could decide to download it or not. So they're not even giving you the option to do this. They're not saying like, oh, okay, well, if you're on a, a yeah. device with you know 32 gigs or 16 gigs, you could turn the feature off. Right. You you pretty much. I mean, you could choose to sync nothing. I mean, you, you know. But the the problem is from the file system, you won't see anything. And by the way. You know, not to absolve Microsoft of the blame here. I mean, I think, uh, look, it's a beta. It's going to change. But yeah. one of the other decisions they made was they got rid of the OneDrive mobile app that was that debuted in Windows 8 and was improved pretty dramatically in Windows 8.1. That was the app you could use to browse OneDrive, right? So even if the stuff was only offline, uh, I guess I should say only online, then you could see it in the app. You could mark it for offline from there. But again, People found it too confusing. Like, there's one drive in the file system. There's one drive in this app. Why do we need both? They're getting rid of the app. And it's like, guys, seriously, like, 
it, it's it's kind of a it's a perfect storm of um, problems, especially for power users who you know like I do use this feature, love it. Um, I I just think there needs to be a middle ground between the old way, Windows Seven Mac, and the Windows Eight one way. You know that. And and by the way, uh, to be I should be fair, they are going to improve it. It's not going to be the one from Windows Seven. There's going to be other things going on. Um, be, it's just not going to be the one from Eight One. And it never will yeah. be. To, to be clear, they will improve it past Windows 10. But what they've said is, yeah. this is never going to be that again. So there'll be some features, you know. But I, I mean, I've. <laughs> it seems like look, you could have uh, a network drive that's OneDrive, where you you know it's really clear that it's off, you know, uh, in the cloud or something. I mean, it, there's got to be a way to see those files, you know, and I, I this is a big problem. I mean, I would just, I would just enable a setting, you know, or uh, the application yeah. is smart enough to detect that you only have 32 gigs on this hard drive, you know, it's a 32 gig hard drive. So it'll say like, Hey, don't listen, don't even download the placeholder. Like you know. it, it'll give you a prompt that says, we have detected that you have a smaller hard drive. Would you like to detect the placeholders or would you just like to sync what you want or, or forget it. It just doesn't do so, it on small devices. Again, not, not defending Microsoft, I actually agree with everything you just said. I Thank would you, prefer Paul. that. In fact, Thank I think you. I well, I think I actually one of the first things I came up with when I first heard about this was just make it a switch. Yeah, I don't care if this thing's off by default. Let me turn it on. You know, but again, this is to play devil's advocate. I think from Microsoft's perspective, what they want is as close to one way of doing this as as is as possible. So, obviously, mobile apps on phones and tablets are going to work one way. Uh, PC applications, what they call sync clients, things that integrate with the file system, in other words, Mac and Windows, are going to work another way. It makes sense, sort of, for those things to be consistent, right? That if uh, you're in a mixed environment and you have Macs and Windows machines, that those things work the same way. Um, I wish they worked like they did in Windows A1, but in a, in, honestly, if you would ask me a week or two ago, how do you see this evolving, I would have said clearly they're going to... Um, do it the Windows 8 one way on the Mac, you know, in the future. And now, obviously, clearly they are not. But you know what's, what else is interesting? This, this, this kind of shows that Microsoft is banking that these smaller hard drive devices, these, you know, like the stream, you know, the HP stream, yeah. these are going to gain tremendous popularity where you're going to see a lot, of pe a lot of people having these 64 gig or 32 gig, very, you know, low, lower end PCs. And that's what they're, they're banking on, really. And well, okay. And and to be fair, on a mobile device like a mini tablet or a phone, you know, for Windows 10, uh, that OneDrive mobile app is going to have to exist. You know, they've stripped it out of Windows 10 for now, but um, that will be the only way that people interact with this stuff on such a device, just as you do on Windows. There's no uh, desktop on Windows Phone today, so yeah. it's not like we're going into File Explorer with our little fingers and stuff. So I mean, here's a great thing. Uh, this is why I love the chat room, and I love how people you know, comment while we're doing this. Chris, mm -hmm. one of our viewers just tweeted us and he gave an example of how much storage is taking for offline only for photos. Mm -hmm. So it's 52.7 okay. gigs and how much? Uh, the disc size size on disc is 500 megs. So the placeholder is 500 megs out of 50. That's significant. That's a lot. Yeah. So, right. So that's like one twentieth of a terabyte, right? Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. So 500 times 20 is what? 10 gigabytes? 10 gigs. Yeah. Yeah. So you can see there's a threshold where you would cross over that line. Um, it's not linear like that. I think uh, yeah. the, the thumbnail sizes are based on different things. Yeah. The these, these are photos. Yeah. Thousand, um, it's thousands yeah. of photos. No, but I mean, I, I, it may not be linear even for photos. It may be, you know, slightly up or down as you go. Um, but whatever. I mean, that's, but that gives you an idea. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. And, yeah, yeah, and and you don't you also don't want um, if if the predominant Windows devices are going to be these one two three hundred dollar tablets and laptops and things, um, you know you don't want to give those people the impression that they're second class citizens, right? I mean you you can't have a dialogue when you boot into Windows that says, "Hey, thanks for buying this cheap piece of crap. Um, you don't have enough storage to sync your OneDrive, so you're you're going to have a really crappy experience." Sorry, I mean. I think the expectation on such a device is that it will be used online a lot. Uh, most people probably use them around the house, so they're going to have Wi-Fi connections. And you'll use um, like that mobile app, you know, and you'll browse 
your files. And, yeah. you know, I, I've been writing a lot about OneDrive lately because there's a lot going on there. But the one thing I could tell you is that when everything's working properly, and usually it is, um, it, you could up, I uploaded a bunch of DVD rips. You can go to a browser and you can play them from, you can yeah. stream them right over the internet. Uh, and they play, they play fine. They look great. Um, so, and I actually, I, I have, I, I'm not sure I've done that. I, I'm I just surprised I've done that, it from a mobile cloud I, well, I guess, yeah. you know, when we talk about the future of computing, it's not going to be big bulky desktops and I7s according to, you know, yes. we're, we're going so, smaller and smaller right. and. I mean, I guess but the, that's, but that's this a positive. Ties into, what's that? I guess that's a positive because they're really, in order for Windows to run efficiently on, you know, a low run machine, it has to be kind of tuned for that. So right. you, the, the concept of what happened with Vista will never happen again, where you kind of needed a very strong, very fast PC to kind of oh, get the performance. <laughs> well, the, the situation did kind of happen again, but I, okay, yes. I guess so. I, I yeah, I guess you're right. It did happen again. Yeah. Um. Look, OneDrive is going to improve. I mean, yeah. if you if you use OneDrive and if you were already using it, and you might have already highlighted some of the issues. You know, you can't um, see or you know access shared files, right? And so, um, I can go into OneDrive in, on, in my file system and see my files. But if you've shared things with me over OneDrive, I can't see those. Um, I can't see those in the mobile app either. Actually, um, I believe. Um, and you can see them on the web, you know, and so there's some disparity between the clients. And I think one of the things they want to do is make things more consistent, as consistent as possible. So no matter how you choose to use OneDrive or, or are, I don't want to say forced to, but are, or how you access it based on the device you're using, that you'll have a consistent experience, you know. I guess, we're um, not there. I guess that's why Dropbox isn't doing it, really. You know, if you think Dropbox about Dropbox isn't doing uh, off, you, it doesn't have oh, like, like the, the offline preview. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not really sure how they do things, but yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, it's a new, it's a new use case in some ways. There probably weren't that many people pumping a terabyte's worth of uh, photos up into OneDrive, but you know, now, now when once they announced the unlimited thing, I thought, okay, this could be a target for backups, and I could put my whole photo collection up there. Is you know, not the only place I want it, but is one of the places where it will be. Yeah, uh, <laughs> my document archive. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm all choked up over OneDrive. Um, <laughs> Wait till we talk about Nokia. Mm. <laughs> you all have no <coughs> Nokia Roid. Yeah, um, it's interesting. <coughs> I, I I hope that they put it back eventually, or they do something with it because I thought that was a yeah, that was a nice little feature that they had, and and it was encouraging for someone like me. Like I have uh, multiple people that share my Dropbox folder, but nobody syncs it. Okay. So, because they they have to manually go to the web version, download the file in order to get the file. Whenever we're doing so, the editing, you know, I should look and see. I I spent, you know, I I, I mentioned earlier I had clean installed, um, <clears throat> or as close to the clean install as I can do, and you know, it's for me it's a little painful because I have a lot of stuff. But ultimately, yeah, it's really not that big. It's funny. I I had no problem syncing. I I but. Because I wanted to be sure that it was working, I did little bits of it at a time. I mean, my OneDrive, is that really right? Yeah, it's, I'm syncing less than 10 gigabytes. Oh, that's, you know, a, that's not from bad. The cloud. I, I, you know, <coughs> excuse me. I mean, you could argue that that's probably all I actually need of it, you know, and maybe I'll add more over time as we go. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be using this. I mean, if you have years and years of photos, videos, documents, and now OneDrive is essentially, you know, one terabyte, is, is, it's tremendous. Yeah. Uh, that's a lot of years of information, and you're going to sync that. I could easily get to a terabyte if, if I, you know, kept right. everything that I had without I'm, having I, hard drive failures, you know? Like, yeah, I've, yeah. Had, I've had awful hard drive failures where I've lost stuff. But if that hadn't happened to me, I would probably just by photos alone, I would be at, you know, but you know, the, the nice, I mean, there's, there, there were so many nice things about the placeholders. Um, if you think about the process you just described, you're like, well, I'm going to wipe out this computer. Or I get a new computer, whatever it is. And, and you, you log in with your Microsoft account. Uh, in my case, I have a couple of big applications. I need to install Photoshop, um, office, you know, both of which now install from the cloud couple of smaller apps, Chrome, you know, whatever. Uh, this process does not take a long time. And while it's happening, OneDrive is creating those placeholder files. And being online, as I would be at home, I can browse through that entire file system, 
My book files are all there for the various books I'm working on. All of the documents I've created for work that date back actually almost 20 years. Um, you know, videos are in there. Music is in there. My photo collection is in there. It's all there. You know, it's not literally there on the disc, but it's accessible in, you know, in a way that's familiar to me, right? Right through the file system. I don't have to, you know, in other words, if I wasn't already using OneDrive, if I wanted to blow away this computer and go back, I, and I only, you know, well, maybe not this computer, I've got multiple disks, but on a, you know, a laptop or whatever, you might want to, you might have to copy that stuff off onto a USB disk, which takes a long time, copy it all back when you're done, which takes a long time, not as much as syncing it for the cloud, but it takes a long time. Um, you know, it was, it was nice. It was, just yeah. a, it was nice. It was one of those, <clears throat> I really got something in my throat here. Sorry. It was one of those things that really just, you know, improved the experience. It was so great. They really just, I mean, they stuck a knife in the back of it and just twisted. It's too bad. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, it's possible that they may add this back no? <coughs> or is this, again. is this totally done? No, they're not adding it back. Yeah. I can, I can tell you that. Oh, man. I would love to get their reasoning for it, their official reasoning for it. Well, they, I mean, they, they, I listed some of the official reasons in that article, um, and I mentioned the, the two big ones, um, which was the people that go offline and don't have the stuff. And then the, just the size of the placeholders. You know, um, you know, people, you know, with, like me with a big, I, I've got terabytes of storage here. What's the problem? I'm, I'm, you know, I mean, in an ideal world, I would take everything on this PC, sync it to the cloud and... Of course, I have enough space. Yeah. Um, you know, but 32 gig client, a 16 gig client, a phone. Uh, by the way, phone, I mean, well, phones don't sync in the same way. Uh, in Windows 10, of course, it's going to be the same platform. So maybe that comparison's not fair yet. But, you know, remember that phone, Windows phones anyway, could have as little as four gigabytes of storage built in, which is ludicrous. But technically, you could do that. Yeah. yeah. What, what are you going to do it for? I guess that's, that's really low emerging market phones. Yeah. The other thing, too, uh, you know, the, the, there's so much to this. I mean, Microsoft makes a business-oriented version of OneDrive called OneDrive for Business. Technically, that is not the same product. It doesn't have the same sync engine. doesn't have the same user experience. Um, if you choose to sync OneDrive for Business with a PC, Windows 8.1 or otherwise, it doesn't matter. You have to sync all of it. There's no, you don't even have the choice to choose what to sync, let alone to have placeholders. And so one of the other goals they have going forward is to make those use the same sync engine to integrate them more, like you see, if you look at uh, OneDrive now on uh, iOS and Android, I believe, that one app does both consumer and business in one app. You know, make them consistent, make them work the same, make them literally be the same, right, from yeah. a technology perspective. And that just helps. It helps with, um, you know, from a user experience standpoint where they kind of look and work the same, but it helps on the back end as well because they're more consistent and reliable. You know, they work better technically as well. So, um, you know, this this actually brings up an interesting uh, discussion to have, and that's since we're putting so much on the cloud, and 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 the way that we do computing is totally different because we have iPads with sixteen gigs, and we have tablets with eight gigs, and our right. phone has six thirty two gigs, and our laptop maybe has you know four terabytes, or it has <laughs> one hundred twenty eight yep. gigs. Is the size of the hard drive? a thing to to think about anymore because everything is up in the cloud i mean i understand that with the placeholder it, it kind of makes sense now with the whole why they took the placeholders out because we don't think about the hard drive like we used to i have a 200 right. i have a 256 in my in my macbook and i have a lot of stuff on here but i never come close to even coming you know to the end of it because everything i have is in the cloud yeah and that's I mean, where it's yeah I mean, I've <laughs> I've really bought into this way of doing things. Um, the one, but and of course, the people who are critical of cloud computing will point to these events and say, "See, uh, see, see." But I think the thing I would just remind people is that um, this is not some kind of a little trend. It's not like pet rocks, you know. It's not something we're going to look back at and laugh on some laugh at someday. Um, this is where this is how it's going. Okay, and so there are going to be stumbles along the way, and I think that it's unfortunate that. The sync client in Windows going forward can't be as sophisticated as it was for that brief shining moment in Windows 8.1. But, you know, the reality is getting all your stuff up in the cloud does make sense for, for the, some of the reasons both you and I have vocalized here. I mean, uh, and for other reasons as well. Um, 
there are going to be hiccups, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of complaining. I mean, especially among the power user crowd that is used to a certain level of functionality. Yeah. You know? and, uh, it's it's a weird, it's a transition period we're in, really. Yeah. You know, if you think about it, we're, we're transitioning into this, this different way of doing things. And a lot of us don't like it. I don't like it. Actually, Pat9 in our chat room said, it's so rare that I'm offline, but it only takes once, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you're absolutely right. All right. Uh, I want to talk about Nokia. Look, by the way, I Go just, ahead. I'm just I'm sorry. Yeah. I just Because <laughs> it's like electricity, you know. Um, sometimes the power goes out. You know, sometimes the internet goes out. And uh, you are left with a reduced set of capabilities at that point. I mean, when it comes to computing, the power com coming out is not the end of the day if you have a portable computer. It is if you have a desktop computer, typically. Um, but same thing with the internet. And so it depends. I mean, I, I look, I, I think we could all be offline a little bit more too. I mean, I, we're putting Wi-Fi on planes and maybe we're going to be making phone calls on planes soon. I mean, sometimes that offline-ness is an opportunity to relax. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so... I mean, I, I we get really stressed over this stuff, but, um, but you know, maybe it's not. Yeah, it may not be as completely critical as we're all making it sound. I guess it's going to be a topic that we're going to constantly talk about. But let's take a little break and talk about a new advertiser on What the Tech, and that's Braintree. Uh, this episode is brought to you by Braintree, code for easy online payments. If you're a developer or product manager searching for the right payment API, you have to check out Braintree. Uh, what they do is they integrate everything into one very easy to use very small uh code where it's actually rather than having multiple multiple services for all different types of you know payment methods you have just one it supports all type of payments that your customers might want to use uh paypal bitcoin all major credit cards and debit cards 130 global currencies and apple pay so if one of your customers using apple pay it makes it even easier for them uh, it uses one small snippet of code, uh, and you're up and running about 10 minutes. I mean, that's unbelievable, really. Uh, if you don't have the time to put it in, uh, or you're a little confused on how to do it, you know, you may not be the most technical guy. Don't, you don't need to worry about it. You just call them. They'll handle all the integration for you, and they'll walk you right through it. Uh, Braintree code support supports Android, iOS, JavaScript clients. Uh, they have seven different languages for the SDK. Uh, very easy documentation to read, and it's only 10 lines of in-app code. So you're not going to, things aren't going to get messed around in there. Uh, it's actually a very secure way of doing it. Now, I know a lot of people developing services. Uh, I know a lot of people using this. Uh, Uber uses this, Airbnb, Hotel Tonight, Living Social, GitHub. These are all some of the people that are, that are using uh, Braintree for their payments, uh, for their services. Now, Here's a great deal for you guys, uh, for people that are that are developing, people that are incorporating Braintree in their service. If you go to BraintreePayments.com slash podcast, that's BraintreePayments.com slash podcast, you could integrate this. And the first $50,000 in transactions are free are, are totally fee free. So you don't have to worry about paying the fee. There's no commitment. You could also play around in their sandbox. They have a sandbox on their website. So you could actually test it in real time to see how it works. Uh, without worrying about, you know, if it's going to work for your service, just integrate it, play around with the sandbox, give Braintree a try, no commitment. And uh, it's actually a very, very good service to use considering all these major brands are using them. Uh, you know that it's going to work. And rather than dealing with all different types of, you know, payment methods, and, and it gets totally confusing for a lot of people. I know someone that's integrating uh, multiple payments on their website. They have a very large website. Uh, they are trying to figure out a way to take Bitcoin and take PayPal and to take banking. Uh, this is the perfect service. I don't know why they haven't tried them out. I, I, maybe they don't know about them. And by the way, uh, Braintree is a PayPal company. So, um, you know, it's a name that you kind of recognize. Uh, and another interesting thing about them is that uh, on their back end, their security is great because you never have to worry about fraud or if you get hacked. Braintree is covering you because they use tokens. Uh, to secure the payment information so the user's credit card info isn't passed on to the merchant's server. So that's another great, great feature that they have. Again, that's BraintreePayments.com slash podcast. Give them a try. We want to thank Braintree for supporting What the Tech. 
Braintree, Paul. What a great name. <laughs> That's the name of a town near here. Is it really? Yeah. I wonder, do you think they're from there? No. I bet you it's one of these New York type of companies. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, talk about names. Since we're talking about <laughs> names like Braintree, what's mm. happening to the name of Nokia, Paul? Because <laughs> this is, uh, have they become Polaroid? No, well, no, not not entirely. Because uh, companies like uh, Polaroid, actually, is a great example, exist only to license their name. Uh, they're not a going concern, you know, creating their own intellectual property and selling products to consumers and to other businesses. Um, you know, Polaroid was the uh, once great uh, photo company, by the way, also right from right up the street from here. Um, but no, I mean, Nokia obviously is a, is a going concern. They sell uh, network infrastructure products. They sell uh, mapping and location services, and they do a few other things that nobody cares about either. But yeah. you know, they're they're a company, right? And they have, um, you know, they sell products and they and services, and they they're a real they're a real thing. So yesterday they teased an event today that they were going to announce some new product. And what it looked like, I don't know if you saw the teaser, but it looked like an Apple TV, didn't it? It looked Did like an see? Apple TV, or I yeah. thought it was a um, like a small PC. You know, yeah. like like the the Mac Minis. Right. I thought it was going to be like a Miracast device and I was going to lose it. In fact, my initial reaction was, see, I still think of Microsoft when I see Nokia. So yeah. I, I saw Nokia is going to release this new product. And I thought, oh, my God, Microsoft's going to release yet another thing with a Nokia name on it. Really? And as it turns out, no, not really. Um, can you hear me OK? By yeah, the yeah, I hear you perfectly fine. I'm getting weird Internet yeah. connection uh, issues here. I just had a little pop up. Are you having issues hearing me? No, but when you were doing the ad, you actually froze. Uh, the audio froze for about, you know, 10, 12 seconds, something like that. Okay. But so far, so good. Okay. We'll just keep pushing. Anyway, um, yeah. My, so Nokia, the, the real Nokia, not, you know, the the former devices and services part of Nokia that's now part of Microsoft. But, but the actual Nokia announced that they were releasing or will be releasing an Android-based tablet actually in early 2015. It's beautiful looking, right? It's very pretty. It's, it, it's a little confusing. And then the more you read about what they're doing, the weirder this gets. First of all, this thing is an almost exact carbon copy of an iPad mini. Oh, it, it, exa even, I mean, the bottom speakers, the dual speakers yeah, on I the know, bottom. Like, I know. do you see it right here? Oh, hold on. There yeah, we go. It looks right there. exactly. Actually, go down a little bit more. The, the next one down is even better. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. I mean, that's the bottom of an iPad mini, pretty much, right? Um, Okay, so like okay, that's a little odd. And by the way, the screen is exactly the same size as an iPad Mini. Has exactly the same uh, pixel count. You know, I think it's like uh, twenty. I don't forget. I don't remember the exact number. But it's, it's being exactly developed the by same. it's being developed by Foxconn, right? Well, that's the thing. So yeah. if you read the press release, you have, if you get all the way through it, it's oh, just geez, keep going. This phone is insane. I'm gonna dump it in the trash. Um, if you read through. I just want the point with the oh, phone. Oh, that's is, the box. Here we go. That's, that's the, the box. box. Yeah. Okay. I've turned the phone ringer off in my office about a hundred times lately, and it keeps ringing, and I don't, know, I don't know what's going on. Okay. So, yes, Nokia has licensed their name, uh, some intellectual property, which they still own, uh, patents related to mobile devices. Um, they've licensed the use of what they're. I think it's called the Z Launcher which is an Android launcher, that, that, that thing there, where you can trace on the screen with your finger and write letters, and it will do that search results thing where you type F and it start, it gives you only the apps that yeah. have the letter F in them, you know, or however that works. Which I believe the Z launch is available in the Play Store now. Okay. Uh, and some other things. But but basically, the, the press release doesn't name Foxconn. That's come out separately. Uh, it, it refers to them as some uh, vaguely as like a partner, you know, some unnamed partner. Yeah, will be going to market with this. Um, it's going to be uh, priced really nicely at two forty nine to start. You know, compared yeah. to I think a modern iPad is probably three uh, three forty nine. Yeah, we don't know what the memory is and all that kind of stuff. It's, um, it has an Intel processor. It is an Intel yeah. Atom processor. 64-bit Intel processor, 2 gigs of RAM. 2 gigs of RAM. 32 yep. gig uh, storage. Oh, it does say 32 gig. Yeah, oh, you're yeah, right. Yeah. I'm sorry. EMMC. That's right. EMMC, right. yeah. 
Okay. Uh, it's running. So, it's running Lollipop, so it's the latest version of Android. Well, by the way, it's not running anything. It doesn't exist. It doesn't so, exist. The, the problem with this device is that it's appearing in early 2015 in China only, and then they're going to start looking at other markets uh, after that. And so this is not something you'll be buying for Christmas. It's probably not something you'll be buying if you live in the United States before uh, next Christmas. I mean, it may if we it ever may never if, come out. It I may I, never. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the point of this thing is, and so. Uh, the notion that a lot, I think a lot of people believe because they don't quite get it, that Nokia was going to like suddenly, you know, they would sell off this uh, business to Microsoft and they were going to jump right back into consumer electronics, you know, that they were going to make phones, which by the way, they're not going to do or whatever. And, you know, sure enough, when they, when they, this image came up yesterday, I thought, really, they're re are they really going to do this? It just seems so, it's such a different, if you look at what Nokia is now, they have nothing to do with this kind of stuff. But I think, you know, I, I, I mean, I all they have essentially I, is their services. Right, which is a viable business and all that kind of stuff. But actually, what the other thing they have is uh, they have a very, very big wireless, uh, and, and not just wireless, but uh, let's say wireless technology oriented patent portfolio, yeah. um, which is ripe for the licensing. And I guess if you think about licensing your intellectual property in that fashion. One of the other things they have, which still has some, some grab in certain parts of the world, not in the United States, but in certain parts of the world, is their name. Um, there, there is a market for devices called Nokia, which, by the way, is the reason that Microsoft is using that name on those dumb phones that are going to sell in you know, Africa, the Middle East, uh, Southeast Asia, South America, Central America, etc. In other words, not in kind of tier A markets for, uh, you know, really expensive smartphones, United States, Western Europe, Japan, uh, China, and so forth. But places where people are not going to uh, subsidize a phone over two years and spend 650 bucks on a phone, I mean, uh, or maybe not even really get a real smartphone. They're, they're still looking at dumb phones or feature phones or whatever. Um, and this is, I guess, uh, targeting maybe the same market. I don't know. Uh, it, it's Honestly, it's an attractive-looking machine. Um, I mean, the mock-ups of the operating system look nice too. I mean, it's it's different. It's not traditional Android. It looks a little different with the icons. Um, I don't believe that this thing is real. I mean, I I, I I'm not saying it's not going to happen, but I I mean, I don't even understand the point of it. Why even announce it? You know, um, if it's not going to be avail available for so long, I wonder if yeah. this is some sort of. <sighs> Because it's Foxconn that's involved, like I almost want to feel like they're saying, like, "Hey, th like it may be an issue with Apple," you know. Like if you get deep into conspiracies, which I love, <laughs> maybe maybe it's a Foxconn and Apple issue where Foxconn is saying, "Like, listen, we 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 can manufacture exactly the same thing for our markets here, emerging markets, and we don't really need to deal with you." Like, I, it, it's a bizarre little announcement to make. Um, I understand why Nokia, you know, you're absolutely right. They have name recognition and, and they could sell products, but why announce this thing that does not exist now? I, 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 yeah, right. Yeah. There has to be a reason <laughs> for the announcement now. Really? I don't know. I don't, you, you think it just, I guess you don't want to get do? lost in the mess that is CES, but if Nokia was going to license their name for a variety of de devices from a variety of companies, Seems like an, a big spread at CES might have been the way to go, but maybe this is a way to get some press. Well, yeah, uh, Nokia's. I mean, Nokia's in the news a lot these days, but it's not really Nokia that's in the news, it's, right? It's the Microsoft, it's Microsoft thing that's in the yeah. news, and maybe this is their attempt to capitalize on that. Um, do you think at Do you think at CES we're going to see uh, a whole bunch of Nokia products that no, are now no, really I don't. Nokia? But I mean, I but. Why license your name to a device? You know, yeah. I mean, the, the Foxconn, the Foxconn part of this is actually uh, the the least mysterious part. Um, companies that build uh, computers for other companies, and we would say consumer electronics products today, uh, have a history of being these kind of back end players that nobody knows about, and that ODMs, and then they become first uh, party OEMs. You know, and they start making their own things. I mean, this is very common. This happens with TVs. It happened with computers, laptops. Oh, who's it? it HTC was one phones. of them, right? HTC, yeah. Asus. Yeah. It happens, yeah, uh, yes, all of those companies, yeah. And um, so this is just, you know, Foxconn has decades of experience building 
uh, expensive products for other companies. And I'm sure they looked at this and said, you know, if we sold some of these things ourselves, uh, we could make a lot more money than if just you know being a, a builder for someone else. I mean, that, okay, that's a business itself. We can still do that. Um, and there are high profile versions of that kind of relationships. You could look at Samsung and Apple. I mean, they compete and ostensibly hate each other, but they sign these really lucrative chip contracts where Samsung is building major components that go into every iPhone and iPad. So um, they're cooperating as well as competing. It's, it's, you know, it's very interesting. I, so I, I still don't get Nokia entering in the consumer market. Mm-hmm. You know, with a, with a device. I don't. Well, they can't build phones for a certain amount of time per their agreement with Microsoft. How, do you know what the terms are for how long? I don't remember off the top of my head. It's only a couple of years. Okay. But they have said publicly they have no plans to do that. Um, certainly, um, I mean, look, think about the lessons one might have learned if you were at Nokia, right? And you're still there, uh, which, by the way, itself is a little suspicious. Um, I, I think I should also point out that the best parts of their device making teams uh, are all at Microsoft. They're not in Finland. Yeah. Right? So, you know, this might explain a lot of what's happening here that, we, you know, we're not going to do things the old Nokia way, right? So that what that means is we're not going to build our own factories. We're not going to build these things ourselves. That's one of the weird things that Nokia always did. Um, do you think in a way that if they didn't do that and they kind of adapted and they, they decided, you know, 10 years ago that they weren't going to build it themselves, it would have cut costs and they would have survived without needing Microsoft? Well, possibly, but the Nokia of 10 years ago couldn't have made that decision, you know. Um, they had to. Well, yeah, 10 years ago is a little. I mean, 2000, let's say 2007, you know, when they when they started It's a hard seeing, thing. You know, I, don't remember, I don't remember the exact number, but let's say, you know. Let's say Nokia was a company that had 35,000 employees, whatever the figure was, and they were all over the world, and there were factories, and there were people who lived at those fa- built, uh, lived at this. Fa- no, it's not China. <laughs> there were people who worked at those factories. That's Foxconn. And they, yeah, sorry, I, that was that's, uh, Apple. Um, and they and they built these products, and they considered this a a key differentiator. You know that everyone else is shipping out and they're building these plastic pieces of junk. But we make these really high quality things because we have this integrated widget, and then that's our big differentiator. You know, the, the the core of Nokia. Part of it is we do this ourselves. It's really hard to walk away from that, and it's expensive to walk away from that. And sometimes you get you and you. They saw a great success doing that for so long. You know, when Apple came along and changed the smartphone market, you know, people always think of that in such a superficial way. But one of the you know the reason Tim Cook is the CEO of Apple is that one of the things he really changed at Apple was this notion of having the right amount of product in the pipeline and not uh, top, you know, making it too top heavy. So we have all these write offs at the end of every quarter. And he was, uh, you know, let's get all of the the building of products to occur with third parties where it's the least expensive. We can do it, but still maintain the quality that we demand. Yeah. And that's why everything is built in China. And he and this Apple wrote this to great success. But Nokia before that had rode their way to great success, and it, it's hard. It's the reason Microsoft is slow to respond to Google, or um, you know, Sears was slow to respond to Amazon.com. Or you know, those companies were not unsuccessful before; they were really successful. But it's hard when you when you do things a certain way, you don't always see the new way as being better. And, and internally, people are fighting for the old thing all the time. Sure, you know. I, I, Nokia always hired from within. I mean, they, they, it wasn't until Stephen Eloff that they brought in someone from the outside. By the way, when I said that they were becoming another Polaroid, I wasn't indicating that that's what they've become now, but they, they can license the name if they wanted to. I, 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 technically, I suppose anyone could license yeah. it. You know, I mean, I, I, look, Microsoft has sold keyboards and mice for decades. Does Microsoft actually build keyboards and mice? No. But it's a Microsoft keyboard and mouse. Microsoft yeah. keyboards and ni- my, mice. I mean, so uh, is that relationship the same as Nokia with uh, Foxconn? N- no, it's not. But it, it's, I, I mean, these things are, I don't know that they really matter. Uh, other than the fact that you risk uh, ruining your brand because if you have this company making Nokia this and this company making Nokia this and this company makes Nokia this and there's no synergy between those things. There's yeah. no commonality of design or quality or whatever you know polaroid today doesn't mean anything because if you buy a polaroid dvd player for some reason <laughs> I, I can't imagine what you thought you were getting out of the polaroid yeah, yeah, yeah. polaroid user, blu-ray 
it doesn't, uh, there's nothing there that helps, yeah. you know, that makes it better or worse. Um, this is one device. I, I, I'm not, and by the way, it looks beautiful. I, <clears throat> of course it does. It looks like an iPad yeah. mini. Um, no, but it looks, you know, it's like a one piece aluminum, you know, it yeah. looks nice. Just it, w- w- nice. when I presented that question where it, it's, is this becoming another Polaroid? I, I meant it for the long run of this company. Is this, are they going to start licensing the name? To virtually we everything, yeah, we don't know. We don't know. Like this, this currently is a Nokia product, obviously. But <clears throat> well, what does that mean, though? Because it's really Nokia, it what, Nokia I mean, designed, it, I, right? Nokia designed I, it. Did they? I don't know. Uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, they they announced this at a some kind of a minor tech conference of some kind. I, I'm not even sure where it was. Uh, maybe over the next 24 hours, there will be more details that will come out about what they said at the event. Because right now what we have to go on is their their junk on their website and their press release and everything. Um, you know, I don't know. I, I, is... Uh, yeah, I, I believe it's a Nokia... <laughs> I really don't know. I believe it's designed by... Nokia has, has, has a part in this compared to where a Polaroid is just some guy licensing the name That's at true. this point. <clears throat> That's you know, true. That, Although, <clears throat> we don't know what part they play. I mean... yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Really? <clears throat> Sorry. We don't know what the relationship is. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm looking at, I actually, as we had this conversation, I went to look at the Wall Street Journal because I figured they would uh, have a little bit more money. What they say is that a tiny team at Nokia, including a few brand licensors and a small group of hardware designers, were involved in developing the tablet. Okay. Uh, the Finnish company has no ambitions to rebuild its vast manufacturing and distribution network, which I, you know, I just mentioned, of course. Um, because again, you know, uh, you don't put your hand on the stove and get burned and then go back. <laughs> you know, you don't do it again. I mean, you're going to do things differently next time, of course. Uh, okay. So apparently, here it is. Uh, are there? Why are there articles claiming that this isn't a Nokia tablet because we designed it? And write the software for it, but don't manufacture it ourselves, technically, I suppose. So the article claiming that it's an OEM design are false, 100% false. Who said that? Uh, John Neeland. Tech savvy. Oh. I don't know who John Neeland is. P- oh, okay, PM, is- PM for, uh, for Nokia. Okay. So this Yeah, so from somebody Nokia. from Nokia says... Yeah, that, well, they, were, they said they were involved in designing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then it is a Nokia device. If if they they have any kind of input in it, rather than just licensing the name, but I mean, what happens if this device fails? You well, know. But this, so there's, there's there's actually many parts, right, in developing a product. Okay, so what Nokia has done is obviously licensed its brand, brand. It's licensed its industrial design, which suggests that they could license this type of design to others, which is Apple's industrial design, but whatever, that's hilarious. And then they have intellectual property related to the wireless industry that, you know, would go into, um, you know, uh, wireless connectivity and yada, yada, whatever they have inside of it. But this other company, Foxconn, for this product, is going to build it, and they're going to sell it, right? So there is a real abstraction between Nokia and the customer. Nokia is not taking on the risk of establishing relationships with retailers online or otherwise to sell these products that's something foxconn's going to do okay so there's a split here this is like really a partnership a, it's a partnership it is literally a partnership yeah, yeah. um you know to kind of to kind of touch on the other thing where it kind of resembles an ipad mm-hmm. i don't fault them on that because there's so much there's only so much innovative design you could do, right? Uh, yeah, like, I guess. <laughs> right? Like I'm I'm gonna take that side of this argument and, and you you tell me the other side. I don't see this as a negative or them, you know, ripping Apple off. I see it as, well, it's a design, it's a good looking design, and, and there's so much you could do with, with a tablet. How many how many different ways can you design a tablet? And this is what they chose to go with. Um <laughs> I, this is okay. by the way this I mean, is probably I, look, how they I, justify lawyer, somebody over there justifies true. it as- <laughs> would any reasonable person look at this thing and say wow that doesn't look anything like an ipad <laughs> like it's it's so actually to be honest uh, from from a design perspective it actually looks like an iphone 6 that's been stretched out to the size of an ipad the ipad mini has that kind of chiseled edge around the front yeah um i would say that it shares more in common with an iPhone, maybe, but 
again, because it's exactly the same size as an iPad mini, I mean, the comparison is hard to ignore. Um, it doesn't have anything like a Touch ID chip, which I think is a big Apple. Well, I was going to say, well, if the Touch ID was there, then yeah, absolutely, Paul. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I don't know. This is, uh, this is um, so, by the way, I, I just uh, will add, Nokia does plan to have a wider brand licensing program. Um, and they are going to try not to overdo that because they know that if they license this in a sloppy fashion, they'll uh, destroy their brand. Um, so they're going. Th their aim is to build the kinds of devices people have come to expect from Nokia. And they do say that this is one of several consumer products that Nokia has in the pipeline. Okay, so no so phones, obviously. Yeah, at least for a couple of years. I mean, they, yeah. they've said publicly we have no plans at all to, to get into the phone business again. But... I mean, uh, you know, it seems like almost anyone could start selling Android phones. And if you're going to have other people build your stuff, I mean, you could see the, you know, maybe their agreement with Microsoft is we're not going to manufacture our own phones. It, I wonder if well, they're... But we're not. Look, we're, we're selling them through Foxconn. But I wonder if they're, part of their agreement is uh, overall design as well. Like, you can't have it resemble anything that looks like a Lumia. Like that whole plastic thing. Like you remember, you know that Android one that they were going to put out that never happened. Yes. Um, well, actually, it did happen. It did yes, happen, but yeah, yeah. but not. You but know, yes. uh, yep. maybe part of their agreement is that they can't have anything resemble like the current Nokia. I, I'm Lumia actually, line. I'm sure that is part of it, but it's. I I think it's not just that. I think for the short term, they literally can't sell a phone. Uh, they can't sell any phone. It doesn't matter what it yeah. looks like. I mean, eventually they probably. I don't know the details. I don't really even care, honestly. As far as I'm concerned, Nokia is a non-event and whatever. I mean, this thing is, it is nice looking. I there There's no doubt about it. It's nice looking yeah. like any mock-up fake thing is nice looking. I mean, it's just, I, we'll see. You know, we'll see uh, if this becomes anything real. I don't know. I'm not... Not a hundred percent convinced. Yeah. Here, so well, when you see uh, that it's so. not coming to the states and it's going to be in China for sometime in 2015, you're like, ah, you yeah, know, there's a there's a while for this. We okay, see a lot I, of this. That's, that's fine. I, yeah. You know, that's fine. Yeah. All right, Just Paul. Not sure. Just not sure. Let's wrap it up. All right. That's it. We're done. We're out of here. I got a I got a little treat here. I'm gonna well, not a treat. I'm gonna show I'm gonna show it on camera during the uh, the bonus show that we do for <laughs> Patreon, guys. If you want to support the show, you want to help us out. Uh, use our Patreon, uh, fund us. We're on Patreon, patreon.com slash what the tech 50 cents, 25 cents, whatever you want to do, you do. We have uh 400 and something patrons right now funding the show. And, uh, it's a huge help really. Um, and in return, we do a bonus show. Wow. Uh Oh, what happened? No, that's okay. <laughs> uh, something Stop. happened. The, the ways in which people copy me online are sometimes a little... Oh, uh, this is a war. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com slash what the tech to help us out there. Uh, you could also help us out by using our Amazon link. GFQ.co slash Amazon whenever you make a purchase. Use that link, bookmark it, and uh, we got a tiny little credit. Guys, if you want to contribute to the show and you want us to talk about certain topics... You go to, let me get the link here. Sorry, guys. It closed. gfqtech.reddit.com. That's gfqtech.reddit.com. Submit stories there. And uh, upvote, downvote, whatever story you want us to talk about. And we will uh, discuss it on the show. And on this show and on Tech News Weekly also, we're going to use the same link for uh, for both shows. gfqtech.reddit.com is a site. You can follow me on Twitter at Andrew Zarin. You can follow Paul at The Rot. And uh, that's it, guys. Stay tuned. If you're watching live, uh, What the Talk is coming up. If you're listening to the podcast, see you all next week.